wrote an open letter to leaders of Muslim states asking them to unite against Islamophobia, particularly in the West. Why did you feel the need to write that public letter? The problem is there's this big communication gap between the Islamic world and the Western societies. It happened after 9-11. When the word Islamic terrorism came into currency, the moment you say Islamic terrorism, the man in the street in the West thinks that there's something in Islam which leads to terrorism, or Islam causes radicalism. And after 9-11, any time some terrorist act went on where a Muslim was involved, the entire 1.3 billion Muslims started becoming targets. Just across your border in Western China, the Chinese government has imprisoned more than 1 million Uyghur Muslims. He's like, good point about um, good point about the reactionary point of view being launched in the uh, Western world. Uh, instead of talking about that, let's go back to what's going on in China. It is Imran Khan, the Pakistani PM, who is 1,000% not going to criticize China. There's no shot. No f***ing shot. Let's see. Let's see what he says. In re-education camps, the Chinese government has tortured Muslims, forcibly sterilized them, and they've destroyed mosques in Xinjiang and also punished Muslims for fasting, praying, even giving Muslim names to their children. Prime Minister, why are you so outspoken about Islamophobia in Europe and the United States, but totally silent about the genocide of Muslims in Western China? What our conversations have been with the Chinese, this is not the case, according to them. The evidence is just overwhelming. Whatever. Damn. He didn't even fucking deflect. He literally just said, that's crazy. Issues we have with the Chinese, we speak to them behind closed doors. China has been a great, one of the greatest friends to us in our most difficult times. When we were really struggling, our economy was struggling, China came to our rescue. So we respect the way they, they are. And whatever issues we have, we speak behind closed doors. How I think a more honest answer is like, like, why don't people just say this, what I'm about to say? What do you want me to do? Like, why doesn't he just literally say, what do you want me to do? America's not even doing anything about it. They just bring it up as a talking point, And they're not even doing anything about it. What do you want me to f denounce it so that we can't be an effective trade partner with China? We don't have the kind of power that America has, and even America's not uh, is stopping their trade from China for that respect. But China can ter easily turn around and be like, "Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna partner up with you anymore, Pakistan." You know what I mean? That's what that's what more people should say. Actually, just like, yeah, what can we do? Do you have suggestions, Jonathan Swan of Axios News? If they come back with a good point, you would look incompetent. But, like, they don't have... There is no good point there. There's nothing you can do. Just like, even when I talk about, like, American imperialism and the death and destruction that America uh, either funds or supports or engages in, as an American citizen, I can't fucking stop this country. Uh, and, and I get pushed back from my own countrymen on this issue. Like, Chinese motherfuckers don't have that right, even. Like, they don't have that kind of liberty to be able to be like, hold up, yo, CCP, y'all gotta stop this, okay? You gotta stop doing this cultural genocide shit. I mean, seriously. Work camps, round-the-clock surveillance of 10 million people that you have considered to be, like, extremist, uh, separatist terrorists, not good. What are you going to do? They can't do anything. The Chinese people can't do anything. What the fuck is Pakistan going to do? Which is why a lot of these world leaders in Muslim countries, with I guess the notable exception of like, uh, with, the, with the, I guess the notable exception of like Erdogan from time to time, rarely ever uh, speak out against it. And in many instances, 
will literally run defense for China. I think that's the worst part. The worst part about this conversation is that, like, they end up running defense for China. Come. This is such a big issue in the Western world. Why are the people of Kashmir ignored? It is much more relevant compared to what might be going in the Urigas. 100,000 Kashmiris have been killed. Yeah, he's trying to talk about Kashmir and what like the fascist Indian government is doing in Kashmir to a uh, predominantly Muslim population. Forced expulsions, murder, kidnapping of politicians in the region. Both are bad. Motherfucker, he's the, he's the prime minister of Pakistan. What do you mean, dude? Both are bad. To him, this is a very important issue. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no shit, both are bad. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, yeah, both are bad. But you're not making, like, a profound fucking statement here. You're not expressing something uh, that is uh, unique here. Chinese national government is over 90 to 95 percent approval rating with its citizens according to Western pollsters. Not sure if you're aware of that. No, I I know that the Chinese, uh, the the Chinese nation uh, loves its uh, its government for the most part. No, I think that the Chinese government has like I I think. Wait, by the way, boys, boys. For the record, I do think that the Chinese government is like pretty fucking popular uh amongst its own citizens like i don't i don't think that that's like maybe not to the degree that it's like 95 percent, but it's certainly more popular than say just say you love it or your family dies no i think this is a cultural difference that is difficult for people to discern especially in the in uh western civilization western societies do not understand it first and foremost it doesn't fucking matter if, like, the Chinese citizenry enjoy the Chinese government's actions or like it or have a high approval rating. Like, if you ask the fucking uh, uh, Uyghurs living in the region that are being uh, uh, oppressed and, and their culture being fucking removed, then, yeah, those guys are not uh, super fond of China, obviously. Not the Muslim citizens. See, that's where tankies will fucking own you and say, that's not even true. It's just the separatist Muslims in East Turkestan or uh, Xinjiang. So those are the, those are the people that uh, uh, China is uh, targeting. You can, you can still practice Islam in other parts of China and be from a different ethnic background and be Muslim. And literally fucking uh, uh, tankies will point that out routinely. Yeah, see? There you go. The place where they're building more mosques. Yeah, dude. Anyway. So the point I was the point I was going to make is that like roommate in college came from an hour outside of Shanghai pretty much said he had no idea people viewed China negatively until he moved here. Yeah, the what point the point people don't understand is like like in a lot of these countries, in a lot of these countries like in China for example, there is an understanding that your government will take care of you as long as you fucking keep your head down. Okay? Not criticize it too much, not rock the boat too much. But there's like a cultural cohesion that, you know, everyone's going to do all right. The government's going to do right by you as best as they possibly can. As long as you, you know, keep your fucking head down and uh, don't think about it too much. And that's part of the reason why, that's part of the reason why they have that uh, mentality. And, and... By the way, the government does do uh, right by a lot of people uh, to the best of their ability. So I understand why. Uh, so I understand why people have faith in their government with respect to that. It's just like I'm Han Chinese. I don't really give a shit. You know, the government's like literally building fucking high speed rail everywhere. Uh, as long as I don't, you know, as long as I'm not like thinking too hard about it, and and uh, you know, trying to be contrarian for the sake of being contrarian, or trying to be contrarian for obvious reasons like uh, the lack of free speech or like all of the all of the control that the government has over my life, uh, then it doesn't matter. Silly Hassan, don't you know nothing back and never happened under communism? It's like the people are still evil or something like that. Well, first of all, like saying that China is communist is kind of wild. 
We're saying the foundations of you saying the citizens have no say is empirically false. It's not just five dudes waving a hand. No, I think the citizens don't have any say beyond like straight up rebellion. If the government, if the government was too authoritarian, that's the, that's the power dynamic in authoritarian countries. If the delicate balance of authoritarianism while also simultaneously uplifting uh, uh, certain parts of the country uh, uh, didn't, uh, if the if the balance fell out in favor of the authoritarianism over uh, uplifting certain parts of the country, then there would be a rebellion. And that's the way that things happen on that side of the world. Okay? The issue with the Chinese government is that they're oblivious to the top of the hour. Oh, fuck you, dude. I shouldn't have read that. I was going to do it on my own. Yeah, it's top of the fucking hour. That's the issue with the Chinese government. Okay? And they refuse to recognize it. Here it is. The 800,000 Indian troops, which have literally, it's an open prison in Kashmir, 9 million Kashmiris are put there. Why is that not an issue? It's so I think it's hypocrisy. They've been a huge partner to you, China. But on some level, doesn't it make you feel sick to have to be quiet because of all this money they're putting mm. into Pakistan? I look around the world, what's happening in Palestine, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Afghanistan, Am I going to start talking about everything? I concentrate on what is happening on my border, in my country. This is on your border. Which is, which is part of, no, that is part of Pakistan. 100,000 Kashmiris are dying. That concerns me more because a half of Kashmir is in Pakistan. This is a grotesquely large human rights atrocity. I would... First of all, I'm not sure about that because... See, this is the part where it's like bullshit. Like, don't say, first of all, I'm not sure about that. But he has to, I mean... He... Otherwise, China will be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> no longer are we fucking trading with you in the same way. Fuck you. The Chinese, this is not the picture I'm sure they that comes that. from that side. So just to put it. He literally talks like you when people ask you about China. No, I'm very fucking open about. I, I, I never say I don't know about uh, the cultural genocide of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. I never say that. I literally very openly state that China is engaging in in absolutely rewriting the culture of Uyghur uh, of of Muslim Uyghurs living in Xinjiang, and they do absolutely do this. They have fucking work camps. They have round the clock government surveillance. They do some of the most inhumane bullshit imaginable to these people, the ten million people that live in that region. Okay, and they want to basically turn them into Han Chinese. They want to destroy their. They want to destroy any kind of like. Uh, attempt that they may uh, uh, have in the future to build like an autonomous East Turkestan. Okay? That's it. That's just the truth. Like, that's literally the fucking truth. And not only that, but also not only that, but also like if you ask uh, Xi Jinping, like the reason why China is doing this, if you ask him, is because they're separatists. They're extremist separatists, terrorists. And uh, he has to deal with them this way because America, that's what he learned from America, dealing with Muslim extremism. This is the official, like, statement from Xi Jinping. So, kind of weird that, like, uh, the very same the very same Marxist Leninist or, or Dengis in the chat that uphold Xi Jinping's supremacy refuse to fucking uh, refuse to just uh, recognize what Xi Jinping has personally said about this issue while simultaneously talking about American imperialism and then refuse to say that uh, I mean and then and then turn around and say like it's CIA propaganda basically okay that's what it is a fine point on this. You are not in any way concerned about the Muslim Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Our discussions with China. He's just like, this conversation was supposed to, for him, this conversation is supposed to be about uh, Kashmir and why the Western uh, nations don't give a fuck about what's happening to Muslims that uh, he feels that he's supposed to be protecting. Okay? And in a way, Jonathan Swan is like literally proving... In a way, Jonathan Swan is literally proving what his point is, which is that, like, no one gives a fuck about uh, Muslims unless it's, like, uh, unless it's, you know, 
unless they're victims in the hands of uh, America's like foreign adversary. And will always be behind closed doors.